Hi, it's Saturday in the Shed and today we're going to unbox my new Katsu router. That's coming up next. <laughs> Hi, it's Saturday today in the small shed and we're going to be unboxing my new Katsu router and the spare parts for it. Hi, it's Saturday in the small shed and today we're going to unbox my new Katsu router. We're going to unbox the spare parts for it and I've got a job that's only going to take a minute or so and that's to replace all the damaged parts on it and that's coming up next. <laughs> probably tell we've had a bit of a bad week in the shed this week um, I've had a new Katsu router arrive which everybody was telling me was the greatest thing since sliced bread and they only cost about 30 quid and so like an idiot I went and bought one uh, not that I necessarily needed one and when it arrived it all looked very nice but as you can see from the unboxing that I did at the time it didn't go well just a very quick uh, unboxing this Saturday morning. Uh, once again, AIM Tools come up with the business within 24 or 48 hours of ordering. Um, so, a new Katsu router. Now, I didn't really think I needed this. I, I never realised I needed a small router until everybody on UK Woodworking kept raving on and on and on about these and I just had to follow the herd. So it's a very nice little router, handheld, very heavy, I'm surprised how heavy that is, it feels quite substantial even before we get to it. I think it's basically a Makita, Makita clone, but um, yeah, I think it was just over £30. You can't really go wrong with that. And certainly for small handheld, rounding off, that type of thing, laminate trimming type jobs. There's a very nice base with it. That's very nice. Aluminium. I expected it all to be plastic, but it, I hadn't seen a lot of the reviews, but I hadn't really taken them in. But it's one of these subconscious things that you don't realise you want these things, and then you happen to see one for sale, and you think, oh, that's cheap. And there we go, it's arrived. That's lovely, that. The um, gear looks pretty cruddy on that, just just so you can look at it. The, the gear on the um, winding handle is pretty much shot even before I've got anywhere with it but um, yeah it seems to work all right irrespective of that but um, what else is in there fence and a dust extractor but yeah given that I'm not likely to be doing much of that with it um, and the fact that Although the teeth are broken and bent in a couple of places, it seems to be working fine. That's rather a nice bit of kit for, <laughs> for £30. If I was really bothered, 
I'm sure that if I went back to AIM with that and said, look, this is not not right, they would exchange or replace quite happily. Um, but it's it's something I should be using probably rarely just to do small round overs and that type of thing. But yeah, just give it a quick plug in to make sure it actually works. speed control is meant to go down lower than three but again it really doesn't want to at the moment so I'll just say I'm beginning to um, realize that the 30 pounds doesn't go very far uh, yeah I think I might have to have a word with them about this because it is almost impossible to turn it down lower than three or four So yeah, you get what you pay for. Now by the time I'd found the problems, I thought I might as well uh, get in touch with Ames Tools and get it swapped, uh, which I assumed would happen without any fuss and bother. Uh, nowadays with this sort of thing, you get no great problems at all. And I thought, actually, given that the thing was only 30 quid in the first place and it would probably cost five or six quid to send it back, I'd got a sneaking feeling that if I was very lucky, they might even send me a new one and forget the old one. Um, but it didn't quite turn out like that. Uh, the first email I had back um, basically suggested that I could replace the parts if they sent them, which didn't quite seem the right way of going about customer service. Um, now, in normal course of events, had it been a decent expensive router or any other new tool, I would actually have just stuck out and said, no, it's got to be replaced. As it is, for 30 quid, who doesn't want to break into a new tool and find out what's inside it under warranty without breaking the warranty? So I decided that I'd take the parts, take it apart and see how it was when it was all finished, uh, safe in the knowledge that if it still didn't work well I could send it back. But actually um, they've sent me the parts, we'll un have a look at those, unwrap them, see what we've got and fit them and see how it goes from there. Right so let's start dismantling this little thing. There's a, you can see from there the damage to the cog itself which fortunately hasn't damaged the track I don't think at all but uh, should be okay but there's a nut on the end of that shaft so I th I'm just assuming it's straightforward unscrew yeah that unscrews ah yes and then the handle comes off and then that just pulls out of the, the cogs on a square well two flats on the, the nut so the cog is just fairly straightforward replacement so that one will be easy to deal with just tack that back together without the cog in at the moment so I don't lose the pieces I was quite surprised that the, the overall standard, of the, I mean this is, this is damage that's occurred at some point and to be fair to AIM it's not even their fault that it's happened, it's just the way they've dealt with the complaint that I didn't think was very good but uh, 
these things happen and you just have to put up with it but it is it is a nice casting uh, I expected there to be a lot more plastic um, on this machine than there actually is it's a bit rough here and there with uh, casting marks and flash and that but it's quite substantial aluminium or an alloy of some sort very nice then we need to get at the speed control Fortunately, I've got an old kitchen unit screwdriver because it needs quite a long length to get in to get a straight straight pull on it. Four screws there to undo. Just screwed into a plastic housing. But again, the main body from here to there is is all substantial alloy it looks very much like a Makita clone of some sort somebody's uh, been studying them fairly closely Four screws that loosens the top where the speed control. So when it first, when I first did the video, it, it went down to three, but it's now stopped. It won't even go down below four. And there it is in an assembly that sits there. And if it just pulls out and it slides out or uh, let's get a screwdriver on it and see if we can just get in that slot. Yes, that just slides out. It's difficult to see whether it's mechanical or Looks like there's been some sort of restriction on it because actually now it's out. It's running okay. So maybe I end up with a speed control for nothing. Yes, it's catching on the heat sink. It's rubbing. You can see it's pulling the uh, red plastic off on that heat sink just slip that out of the way yeah that's all it was all it is is that this this heat sink or cover or whatever it is is slightly loose and it can pivot about that axis in the middle and when it gets up close it, it interferes with the button turning so I'm inclined to just put that back together so I don't have to start undoing any of the wiring. Um, it all looks a bit pinched here and there, the wires, they're all squashed in through with a metal cover on it. I'm not over impressed by that, but <laughs> for the umpteenth time, what do you expect for 30 quid? And there's not a lot else, there's a big motor in there, on off switch. It is fairly straightforward. I'm inclined to, as I say, push that back down into there and leave well alone, safe in the knowledge that I've actually got a spare speed controller. That is if I can get it to go back. Yes, it's gone in. Squeeze the wires back in. Lovely. Well, that's that one was an easy fix.
So at least if you get one which at any time you start to get a problem with the speed control switch sticking you can see it's a relatively simple thing to sort out it's only that bit of metal that's just moving slightly if it does it again I'll probably just put a spot of uh, hot glue gun on it but uh, that in itself is an easy one to do so that only leaves the cog replacement now Trying to see where oh there's a slot there that's it I was just trying to see where it registered but uh, slot in the side and it is you know it's a nice mechanism that it's with the cog in place it runs very nicely so we'll just put the new cog in and we'll be done I'll just try this just to make sure it's now got all its speeds. Brilliant, not too much of a job. With the new gear it's fairly straightforward to just unscrew the components again. Slot the new gear in. Locate it onto the flaps. Put the clamping collar back on. Put the nut back on. And screw it back together. slot back onto the router and at least it now gives me the full travel and locks over. So we have the router back as it should have been delivered um, not without a certain amount of messing around but um, it works so let's move on and uh, we'll start and find some projects to use it on. I've got quite a few things that need a small round over on the edge of relatively small sections of timber so uh, we'll probably give it a run out on that first. Now what I didn't get round to with the unboxing was uh, the other things that came with it. Was a user manual, set of brushes which is useful although where you put them because when you come to use them you'll have lost them but that's not their problem there is a small fence by the look of it That's not too flimsy and the very that's rather nice as well. There's a nice 
metal bracket there with a, a roller guide on it. I haven't got a clue what it's for but it is substantial. I mean all of the parts here they're quite nice quality, quite thick metal. The fence itself is probably slightly thinner than the bracket but um, it all feels quite solid and the, uh, the screws and the, the plastics that they're using aren't cheap tacky stuff, they're quite uh, quite nice. I must have a look in the book and find out what that's for. And then there's a dust extractor port which again I have to find a appropriate sized adapter for that. And a spanner and I think that's a collet to take it down to quarter inch is it from three eighths I'm guessing oh, I see and the, to lock it the um, the spindle there's a, a push push in that engages with the slot in the shaft locks it up and undo the collet yeah it's got a quarter inch in it at the moment so that's presumably a three-eighth collet but you put a bit in tighten it up That's it, let the uh, button come out. You can set depth. And I'm assuming that by the shape of the castings that, that will unscrew. Goes in a long way. Wow. And then that part I'm guessing will fit onto there because there are grooves on it. No, maybe not. No. Perhaps not. Read, read the book. distance guide that's fine I can understand that one so that's that's okay the one with the roller on it that I'm struggling with I don't know. must be a follower of some sort it's a trimmer guide for doing curved cuts on veneers for furniture and that sort of thing okay that's got to go below the cutter. Oh, I see, yes, it's, it mirrors the centre point. So you'll be able to run round on something to, uh, as a guide. If you haven't got a, presumably if you haven't got a bit with a runner on it, you can adjust that in and out. Get a depth. So yeah, very useful. It's all good, um, nicely put together bits and pieces. It's just a shame it was spoiled by the uh, initial poor quality control and the slightly um, dubious customer service. The dust extract clips over there. And that's what the other screw's for. So yeah, 
I can see what everybody's um, raving about with them, irrespective of my particular um, experience, which was, you know, these things happen. It's a it's a Friday knocking off work time job, but um, it's working okay now, and it's very very nicely uh, put together for thirty pounds. You can't really complain. So I'll leave it at that. So there we are, we've got the router working, it gave me a chance to get a video out of it. Um, I still don't think it's really a very good sales practice to uh, get your customers to repair the things that are damaged when they get them and I think that probably will reflect uh, on Ames Tools more than anybody. Uh, you're only as good as your last customer contact and in this instance you know I, I've had several things from them in the past and been very happy in this instance I thought it was a pretty poor service so um, I probably won't be using them again I'll leave you to make up your own minds about it uh, but I've got a router that works we've got a video out of it and I had a play inside a Katsu router um, so all in all not a bad week at the end of it so I hope it was of use to you if you like the video, please press like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye.